Hello, welcome to this bonus video um, for verse words. This is for Parshat Vayichi. Genesis 47, 28 through 50, 26 for the reading cycle 57, um, This uh, I had a couple questions based on the, the previous uh, verse words, the ones that I, one that I posted earlier this week um, from a patron. And I thought that the questions were sufficient, the question was sufficiently interesting that it warranted a, a video to explain. Okay, so first, the first question was uh, about the Jewish naming convention. Uh, the, the, this person asked me that I should uh, explain what the first words, what, what the various parsha names mean, which is a good idea. I'll, I'll institute that into the one verse a week videos. Um, but quickly, basically, the convention is is not not to not to be terribly creative, um, and to just take the, the the first significant word or phrase from each individual parsha, and take that as the name. Or in other words, they they serve as sort of a hyperlink um, in our knowledge of the text. If you've been through the text enough times. Um, you begin to create, have an awareness, you know where, where these sort of hyperlinks are that jump from Parsha to Parsha. So, this week's Parsha starts, uh, starts out with the, the, the verse, um, 47-28, it says, V'yechi Yaakov, and Yaakov lived. V'yechi, and he lived. So, Parashat V'yechi literally means, V'yechi means, and he lived. So let me read the entire verse, since this is a bonus. V'yechi Yaakov, and Yaakov lived, Be'eretz Mitzrayim, in the land of Egypt. Sheva, Shva, Esre, Shana, Shva, seven, Esre, ten, Shana, years. Seventeen years. So he lived in the land of Egypt for seventeen years. Yehi, and it was Yemei Yaakov, the days of Yaakov. Shnei Chayav, the years of his life. This is a well-known pattern in Hebrew, called the parallelism, where it will say Yemei Yaakov, and in parallel, what are the days of Yaakov? Shnei Chayav, the years of his life. Um, sometimes you'll see in the translation they'll have a comma or something there. So Yemei Yaakov, Shnei Chayav, the days of Yaakov, the years of his life. How many, how many years were they? Sheva uh, Shanim, seven years. Ve'arboim, and forty. Uma'at Shana, and hundred years. Hundred and forty-seven years. Okay, one more time on this verse. V'yichi Yaakov, and Yaakov lived. Ve'eretz Mitzrayim. In the land of Egypt, Sheva uh, Shva Esre, seventeen Shana year years, Vihi Yeme Yaakov, and it was Vihi Yeme Yaakov, the days of Yaakov, Shnei Chayav, the years of his life, Sheva Shanim, seven years, Arboim, four and forty. Uma'at Shana, and 100 years, 147 years. Um, the numbering conventions are interesting, the way they do this. I have, again, I have a whole series I've been posting on numbers. I will be adding to it, God willing, um, in the coming months. Okay, so let's go. That really wasn't the question. That was just me um, answering, <laughs> answering a request. So, God willing, I, in the future videos, I'll start uh, introducing the verse, uh, the Parsha name, and orienting you as to where it is um, in the, uh, whatever, wh wh where the, the Parsha name comes from. Okay, so let's go look at the, the actual question. So, the question is, is a good question, and it's a question that uh, beginners um, definitely will have. Or anybody learning a, a language, it's, it's the question of homophones, words that sound the same, maybe even perhaps might be spelled the same, but have different meanings. 
that um, is definitely a problem for anybody learning a language. Homophones, to my knowledge, exist in all languages. And there might be some hypothetical language out there without homophone, without homophones. But um, Hebrew certainly has them. English has them. Um, okay. So the verse I did in the verse words uh, for the sixth Aliyah was Genesis 49, 27. And it reads, Binyamin, Benjamin, Zev Yitrof is a tearing wolf, a uh, ravenous or ferocious wolf. Baboker in the morning, Yochel Ad, Yochel Ad, he eats. Baboker in the morning, Yochel Ad, he eats. Ad, that's the, the question. Vila Erev, and in the evening, Yechalek Shalal, he divides Shalal. One more time. Binyamin Zev Yitrof. Baboker Yochal Ad. Vila Erev Yechalek Shalal. Okay, so Shalal is the probably the most common word for plunder, booty, uh, spoil, um, you know, you sort of p pirate words. <laughs> um, we have a, another word, an interesting word, ad. Ad. So this word appears three times in the Bible. And we're going to go through those verses. Um, it, it, so, so the question was, well, wait a minute, the odd, I, I know, um, all my, my vocabulary list in the book that I'm using says that odd is the preposition until, which, you know, so w w where does this uh, translation of prey or, or, or plunder, w where does that come from? Okay, so, well, where does it come from? Well, it's a different word altogether. Um, even though it's spelled the same, sounds the same, it's a different word altogether. And there's yet another word that is spelled the same, has different uh, vowels. Uh, it's a verb meaning to testify. Um, so there's so there's conceivably three different words that could be um, w without knowledge of the the vowels. There's three different words that this could be. Okay, so odd. Uh, so I don't usually advocate using Strong's, but uh, I feel it's a crutch. Uh, I've seen people fully convinced of their ability to read Hebrew and they really just have the ability to look up numbers in Strong's. <laughs> so that's not what we're, we're shooting for. So, but to satisfy your curiosity, this word here, odd, has this, is the strong number 5706. We go look it up in Strong's and, and he translates it as prey or plunder. Prey or plunder. Okay, so that's that. So ad and shalal, uh, so shalal means plunder, and ad means prey or plunder. So in the video, I said that I like the word prey better, um, and that is, is how the, the stone uh, translates it. Um, but there's also a good argument to say this means spoil or plunder as well. And let's look at some of that, okay? So first of all, the KJV. Translate this, translate this verse as Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. It's not a, actually a very good translation on their part, which is unusual. KGB usually has decent translations. Um, right, the, the, okay. In the morning, he shall devour the prey. In the morning, he shall devour the prey, ad. Babocher yochel ad. In the morning, he shall devour the prey. And at night he shall divide the spoil. The Arab, the Arab, and the evening Yechalek Shalal. He shall divide the the plunder, spoil. Art scroll, uh, the art scroll stone. Benjamin is a predatory wolf. In the morning he will devour prey, and in the evening he will distribute spoils. Again, odd here they translate as prey. Rashi. The uh, principal um, commentator, the one that's most frequently printed in, in Jewish Bibles. We, of course, we have a whole uh, universe of uh, commentators. But Rashi is, is, is the most principal, uh, most basic uh, commentary. He 
notice that this is a, an unusual word, ad. I would say a word that appears three times in the Bible is, is not, you know, a fairly common word. Um, he says that this is Lushan Biza Vishalal. This is Lushan of loot and plunder. Loot and plum, plunder. He relates it to what the Targum Ankelos um, translates Shalal. The word Shalal, plunder, is translated in the in the Targum Ankelos. That's a, a fairly ancient Aramaic translation of the Bible. He translates Shlal, the word for Hebrew word for plunder, as the Aramaic word Ada'a. Ada'a. Ein Dalet Aleph Hey is how it is spelled. So we and he consistently translates um, Shlal as that in the Bible. So Shlal is a, a much more common word. So he translates as that. So we have a cognate um, proof that. Aleph Dalit can mean um, can mean uh, plunder, and then he brings the next verse that we're going to talk, discuss. He brings it in uh, Isaiah thirty three twenty three. He also brings it as a proof that Aleph Dalit um, can mean plunder. So, incidentally, if we even just look at uh, this uh, verse up here, forty nine twenty seven. Um, we see that Aleph Dalet, so typically we would be, we would have Aleph Dalet as a preposition, but we see it's not acting as a preposition here, it's acting as an object. Uh, in the morning he will eat Ad. So if it was the preposition, he would eat Ad until, well, until what? You know, until the cows come home? You know, <laughs> until sun, sundown? It, uh, so the, the, the sentence here um, is from the c context is sure this is not a, a preposition and that this is some sort of noun. Okay. So we have pray. Rashi is uh, so KJV and Stone both translated as pray, and Rashi is uh, relates the word ad to the Aramaic ada. Um, which means plunder. Okay, so that's that. Now let's look at Isaiah 33, 23, since Rashi invokes it. This is the, sec the second usage of this uh, word. This is a very difficult uh, puzzle, uh, verse, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Um, it's all busy with uh, sort of maritime words. So let's, let's read the Hebrew real quick. Nitshu chavalai. Baal Ichazhu Kain Tarnam Baal Parsu Nes Az Hulach Ad Shalal Marbe Pis Him Bazu Vaz. Okay, that's a mouthful. So Isaiah, Yeshaya is notoriously difficult uh, to read. Okay, so Nitu Nitu Chavalai, your so basically your ropes will be um, be loosened or or, or pushed. Uh, this 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 root can mean to push, to like like to be pushed aside. So Nitu Chavalai, Baal Yechazu Chen Tarnam, they will not be fixed to the the, the mast. Very easily, Baal Parsu Nais. They will not, uh, the, the Nais, the banner or the sail, will not be spread. Um, Baal is a, is a later term. It's a, um, it's a, a Hebrew term. It's a, it's a negating term. Uh, it's like will not. So Baal Parsu Nais means they will not spread out their sail. As then, Chulach Ad. Then um, Ad will be divided. This is more parallelism. Shalal Marbe, a lot of plunder. So Az Chulach Ad, then prey or plunder will be divided. And then in parallel, Shalal Marbe, a lot of plunder, a lot of booty. Pischim 
bazubas, and the lame will 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 take they will take um a portion of the plunder okay so the, the odd here the kjv translates is pray thy tacklings are loosened they could not well strengthen their mast they could not spread their sail then is the prey of a great spoil divided the lame take the prey okay so we have here Isaiah is being poetic. We have three words that could mean prey or or spoils. So ad, shalal, and vaz can all mean um, spoils. Um, I mean, we we have such we have such words. We have many words also um, prey, prey, spoils, bounty, uh, uh, sp- uh, plunder. We have different words that could mean that as well in English. So he's just sort of using his thesaurus. <laughs> so ad, shalal, and vaz can be taken to mean something similar. So az chulach ad, he will divide his, the, the, the prey will be divided, or or the plunder will be divided. Shalal marbe, a lot of booty. Psichim bazu vaz. The, even, the, even the lame will take um, bounty. We'll take uh, pl- pl- part of the plunder. Okay, so let's, we did the KGV. Let's look at Stone. Stone says, Your ropes have been abandoned. They will not firmly secure the mast. They will not spread the sail. Using mar- maritime ship imagery. Then abundant spoils and plunder will be distributed. Even the lame will take b- booty. So... The end here I don't like, um, so I, I would translate this as then abundant spoils, comma, um, I, I would say then um, spoils will be divided, comma, abundant plunder, something to that extent. But anyway, they translate here um, odd as spoils, not prey. Previously in the, the first in question above, they tra- translated it as prey. So we, we, we see um, that it, it can, the, the context can vary. Um, so we, we'll translate it either as prey or as spoils. Okay, so finally the last um, reference here is Tsefania, uh, uh, 3.8. Okay, this is a long verse. I'm just giving the first snippet. He says, Tsefania uh, says, Lekain, Chachuli Noom Hashem Lo Yom Kumi Laad. So, Lakain, uh, therefore, Chachuli, wait for me. Noom Hashem, the word of Hashem, the word of the Lord. Lo Yom Kumi, for the day that I shall ri- rise, Laad, for um, prey or for plunder. Okay, one more time. Lekein chachuli, nuum Hashem, leyom kumi laad. Okay, KJV translates it. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. Laad, ad here means prey. Again, this is not, the, the context tells us this is not a preposition. And this is some sort of, of noun, so we we step into the more rare meaning. Odd, meaning prey or plunder. Okay, the NIV does something interesting here. Um, I don't know why uh, they do it. Um, perhaps they are trying to make this sound softer. Um, it's, not, doesn't, it's not very good um, translating on their part. It says, therefore, wait for me, declares the Lord. For the day I will stand up to testify. Okay. Layom kumi laad. So aid means to testify. We, we, I made reference to that other usage of, of the uh, Aleph Dalit. The same spelling, but different um, different verb form. Different, it's a, as a verb, it has different uh, nukudot, different vowels. 
So that really doesn't make sense here because clearly this, uh, seeing the, the vowels and seeing how it is uh, situated in the sentence, we see this is not a, um, not a verb. So standing up to testify um, doesn't r really make sense here. Um, but nevertheless, that, that's what they do. Um, and we see some of the, a minority of translations uh, take it like the NIV. I, I wonder how much their translations, <laughs> or maybe they're just all adaptations of the NIV. <laughs> a lot of uh, translations today really are not translations, they're just adaptations of other translations, uh, which is also sloppy um, to take to rely on another translation. One should always go back to the original text. Okay, fine. Stone translates it. Therefore, wait for me, the word of Hashem, the word of the Lord, for the day when I will arise to plunder, in brackets, them. To so plunder, I don't like it. Uh, plunder, the odd, it works. Rise up for plunder. Um, they take it. So arise to plunder. Um, it could be so in brackets, they, they let us know that this is a verb. And the problem is, is we have the same problem as we had previously. Um, this, is, this is not a verb. If, once you develop a sensitivity, you will know that this is not a verb. So they um, come. Um, so it's really a rise to plunder, and they could have left them uh, off. Uh, and that would be that he's, the, the God is arising to these spoils. Anyway, um, it's a difficult word because we don't have a lot of usages in it in Biblical Hebrew. You know, again, Biblical Hebrew is a closed universe, um, so we don't have a lot. We can look at cognates, like uh, like Rashi did. He looked at the, Ar the Aramaic. Um, and that is how a lot of the uh, translations um, used the, the KJV, it's you know, pretty famously, uh, they, they use the Ben Asher text that was printed in the, uh, the first Mikroot Gadolot, the first rabbinic Bible, to translate the, uh, their, their text into English. So many of the people involved in translating the King, King James, um, the King James has some major translation problems, but, but on average it's, it's pretty good. Um, the, the translators were mostly competent Hebraists and were also uh, familiar with uh, sort of the rabbinic commentaries to the various verses. So a lot of the King James um, actually takes into uh, account a lot of the, uh, the, the, you know, what the, the rabbinic comments. So certainly Rashi's words um, it probably influenced the King James here. Okay. Long story short, um, odd is not, the odd here is not the preposition, it's a homophone for, that means prey or plunder. Again, it is Strong's number 5706. Um, I don't advise using Strong's, but for the occasional uh, look-see, it's fine. Okay, I hope that was beneficial. I really appreciate the, the question. Um, I, it, it makes me happy to see uh, people interacting with what I'm doing, and uh, I, you know, I can't promise I'll make a, a video for every question, but if, a, if the question is sufficiently good, and I think it needs to be, uh, you know, recorded for posterity, then certainly I'll uh, make a video on it, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good Shabbat Shalom. Uh, call to the Sakharaba. Keep learning.